Hello, my name is Toby Astle and I am Perkin Elmer's Global Market Manager for Cannabis and Hemp. It's a pleasure to be with you today and thank you to Lab Roots for this speaking opportunity. Today I'd like to chat about simplifying pesticide and mycotoxin testing workflows with full sample preparation and data management automation. Just a brief agenda for today's talk. Firstly, I'd like to speak to some details about cannabis and CBD. And then I'd like to emphasize the importance for testing the product. I'd also like to then expand on where we see experimental error introduced into these workflows. And finally, conclude with what we can do to mitigate these errors using automation. As we know, cannabis is a complex material to handle. But as we see increasing legal markets open up around the globe, we're excited to work with scientists to make sure that each chemical assay is performed confidently and the correct data is collected. We know that the material has a wide number of constituents in it, such as cannabinoids, terpenes, chlorophyll and waxes. And this is also compounded by the additional materials used to make some of the final products you see here. And what we now appreciate is that the need to test cannabis for consumer safety is paramount. If we look at some data published by California, the Department of Bureau of Cannabis Control, we see that pesticides are one of the highest reasons batches fail in the testing environment. Making sure labs have resources and options for testing both pesticides and mycotoxins successfully will be critical in ensuring consumer safety. We can also look at the CBD industry and we have seen data to show that a number of CBD products are also showing presence of pesticides and mycotoxins above the action limits. Collectively, we want to work together with the industry to improve the workflows and reduce the number of failed batches. So what I'd like to focus in on today are two areas that are important for all laboratories, not just cannabis and hemp. One is sample preparation and optimizing the sample prep preparation to be the most efficient and also data quality and data control as we do not want to reduce preparation time at the sacrifice of poor data quality. So looking at this together combined with the quantitative assay at the end is critical for a verifiable method for these industries. But what we can take note of is that for all laboratories we see a significant amount of time and also error occur in sample processing and sample preparation. We know that each analyst is going to behave and perform differently. This inherently has an associated experimental error with it, and depending on the day or the analyst, that can be considerable. When it comes to assays such as the pesticide and mycotoxin assay, where we're looking at parts per billion, even the small amount of error at the beginning can have significant consequences in the final result. Let's take a look at California as a case study to see and understand where some of this experimental error can come from. If we look at the pesticide and mycotoxin testing requirements, labs need to source 66 pesticides and five mycotoxin standards. These often come from a handful of suppliers. They also need to work with suppliers for the internal standards and the consumables for, for the method. This is a very cumbersome process and leads to quite a lot of inefficiencies in managing the workflow in the lab. When it comes to preparing the calibration standards and the quality control standards, we also see a very laborious process on the bench. We see the stock solution be mixed and then subsequent dilutions for each of the calibration curve points. This inherently also can contribute error systematically if it is not performed correctly. The Perkin Elmer application team appreciated this and realized that it was not ideal. So we looked at the workflow very closely to see what we could do differently to improve throughput and data quality. And what the result was, 
was the launch of a pre-formatted certified reference material reagent kit, which carries an ISO 17034 certification and includes calibration vials broken down into eight points, each having 77 pesticides and five mycotoxins in each calibration vial. We also included quality control standards and internal standards. And what this results in is offering labs a more efficient option for their workflow. It starts by having just one part number to order and manage, and all of the required reagents and consumables now come in this part number. When it comes to the bench level, it's very straightforward. We just take the vial out of the freezer, let it come to room temperature, and inject it into the LC vial for the instrument calibration. This can be used across all matrices and is continually being evaluated to meet all the regulatory pesticide testing needs. And looking at the time savings specifically from this reagent kit, we looked at the legacy workflow of what I mentioned earlier and the cumbersome process of preparing multiple calibration and internal and quality control standards. With the kit, these steps are now removed, saving labs up to 90 minutes per day, which they can be used to allocate those staff to more appropriate tasks such as data review. Understanding that quality control is essential and needed across all pesticide and mycotoxin labs, we also included the quality control standards in the kit, specifically, the continuing calibration verification vial, or CCV, the ICV, the initial calibration verification, which comes from a second manufactured lot for ISO and state compliance, and lastly, the laboratory control sample, or LCS. These are part of a rigorous QMS workflow for any busy compliance lab. What we also appreciated was that cannabis samples and cannabis matrix types have a significant influence on the performance in the instrument. What we see here are five different cannabis and CBD samples of five different matrices having various degrees of iron suppression in the mass spectrometer. To mitigate and improve the data quality for this test, we now included internal standards into the same reagent kit. We include 30 internal standards that allow you to now quantitate very low level pesticide and mycotoxin residues in a challenging cannabis matrix. Being able to source the internal standards at the same time as the calibration standards also means the lab can offer or work with much more efficient processes. And the result for this kit is being able to take reagents out of the box and produce an eight point linear calibration curve quantitation. Together with Perkin Almer's pesticide and mycotoxin methodology and the QSite 420 LCMS MS, there is now a much more confident workflow for cannabis and hemp laboratories. To make sure that this workflow is proven to work in high volume compliance settings, we took part in the Emerald Proficiency Test earlier this year, passing for, for pesticides and mycotoxin quantitation, giving us the full confidence that this workflow is viable in cannabis and hemp compliance testing labs. So what I'd like to talk to now is taking it further and adding automation to this workflow. We see labs now running upwards of one, 2,000 samples a month and automation has been seen to add efficiencies across all indices and now can be adopted for cannabis and hemp laboratories. Automation improves the compliance from seed to sale and reduces or removes some of the repetitive steps while also improving reproducibility. It also allows the lab to allocate the staff to do more higher value tasks whilst the technology and the automation performs the mundane sample preparation steps. What we've been able to do is develop a specific workflow called QSWorks 420 Automation, 
which includes the microbalance, the Janus 420 sample preparation platform, the QSite 420 LCM SMS, and finally, Simplicity Lab 420, a cloud-based software that communicates and transports the data across the entire workflow, presenting it in a certificate of analysis or even to metric in the compliance environment if needed. Let's take a look now specifically at the Janus 420. This is the first fully automated sample preparation platform for cannabis and hemp pesticide and mycotoxin testing. What we see here is that there are technologies to vortex, centrifuge, mix, filter, and transfer liquid and standards across the workflow. The final result is the flower sample at the beginning is then converted to being in a two milliliter HPLC vial that can go straight on the mass spectrometer. But what we wanted to be very cautious of was replacing technology or a manual workflow that has very high performance requirements. What we were able to do is compare the and evaluate the manual and the automated workflow and found them automated workflow to have equivalent or better performance than the manual workflow. This gives us the confidence that these automation workflows are viable and appropriate in the cannabis testing environment. What we were able to do is confirm that we can prepare 48 cannabis samples in less than two hours, a similar task by labs taking upwards of four to five hours. This also gives the benefit that the lab can allocate those important personnel staff to other tasks while the sample preparation is being done. To conclude, Hurricanama is excited to offer you the widest, widest breadth in portfolio workflow solutions. It starts with the sample preparation from the Omni homogenizers, goes to the reagents and the sample preparation platform I showed. And lastly, finishing with our mass spectrometry portfolio of the QSite and the Simplicity Lab 420 software that connects it all together. I encourage you all to check out our social media channels to stay current with the industry updates and application literature. You can find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And lastly, I'd like to say we are excited to work with all cannabis and hemp labs globally and bring technology like the One Pesticide Reagent Kit and the Janus 420 QS Works Automation Workflow to labs to improve their throughput and also improve their data quality. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me after this presentation as I would love to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for that and take care. Bye-bye for now.